Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at a file transfer utility called Transmit and it's just been updated to version 5. Now one of the things we're going to do is do a file management uh, software showdown uh, where we take a look at some file uh, management software and kind of go over the features of each of them and in this series you'll get a good idea of what's out there and you can figure out which one fits your way of working best. And so we're going to do a, a kind of a short series on that where I'll go over a few of them. So we're going to start with Transmit 5, uh, mainly because it just came out with a new version. And so it'll be good to kind of go over those new features, especially for those of you that may already use this application, because Transmit 5 is a, is a pretty popular file transfer uh, software uh, by Panic Software. So this is the uh, transmit interface, and as you can see, we've got two panes going on here. You can see uh, we've got on this side, we've got my local uh, file storage uh, for my main uh, Mac here. And then over here, we have a uh, connect area where we can connect to uh, other servers or remote servers and those sorts of things. So let me just uh, tell you a little bit about the interface. You'll notice across the top here, we do have a tabbed interface, so I could create tabs just like I can in the Finder. In fact, I can use the same shortcut of Command-T. So if I just hit Command-T, you'll notice there's another uh, tab here. Again, these are showing the same thing, but I can go back and forth between these tabs, and I can even close the tab if I want to. Uh, the other thing is I've got a shortcut bar across the top here that will take me wherever I want to go. If I want to go to the Downloads folder, you can see it'll jump me there. If I have any of these folders, that I want to get quick access to, uh, all I've got to do is, grab, is select the folder, grab it, and just move it up here into the uh, title bar up here. And then I can just uh, you know click back and forth between them and get to where I want to get to. So that's kind of a nice touch there in the interface. Now you'll notice across the top we've got uh, a number of icons up here. And so I can customize the toolbar across the top. If I just uh, control click, I can choose to either use small size of icons. You can see it shrunk it a little bit or I can uncheck that and it'll make those icons bigger. Or I can customize the toolbar and I get this drop down where I can select different items that I might want to add and I can just drag them up into the interface. So for instance, if I wanted to uh, have the edit one up there, I just drag it, put it wherever I want to. You can see how the icons move around. Let's say I want to put it right there and then I can say done and you'll see that now I've got that added to the top. So again, uh, it gives you a nice option to have that customization. Now you'll notice uh, over here too on the very ends of this uh, these areas here, if I just uh, click on this, I get this nice drop down that allows me to choose the view options. I can view by icon if I want to do that, or I can view in, uh, in the list view with the uh, triangles. I can go here to the three pane view, and then I can also go to cover flow if I wanted to use cover flow in here as well. Uh, I'm just going to go back here and do that. I can also choose to have one pane or two, so I can just choose the one pane view and the second pane goes away, or I can go to a two pane view and it shows up. I can choose again to sort by name, kind, date, modified, size. I can also choose to show invisible files, so if I want to look for invisible files that don't normally show up, I just check this box and you can see they've shown up. If I just click them off, they disappear. I can choose to put folders above files, I can use relative uh, dates, show file count, and then I can do the text size to as big or small as I want. You can see how it increases the text size to really big, or I can go down really small, uh, depending on my eyesight. So I'll probably just go right there to 12 and leave it at that. So I can do that for either side and do that customization and have it set the way I want. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of items here. You'll notice across the top, I've got this item where I can get info, do a quick look, new folder, new file, or refresh. I can add a new folder across the top here. I can delete if I highlighted a selection. And then I've got transfer uh, activity for this particular tab. And then I've got to synchronize a link left and right navigation, uh, hide and show information. And so if I just uh, come over here and let's say select the applications folder uh, actually let's just go here and uh, let's select that and then if I did info it will show me all this information about that particular folder I can choose to calculate the size so it'll tell me how big it is as well as I can set the read write privileges in here I can uh, put a tag on there in terms of color and then I can choose the owner and the group and then apply these permissions to this particular area. Uh, I can leave this on so that when I click to other areas, you can see that it tracks exactly what's there. Uh, or I can just uh, click away and have that disappear and show up here is as a regular window. 
Uh, I'm just going to close that and put that in there, and we'll just come right back to, uh, let's just go to desktop. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the interface and features there. Let's talk about how we connect to our different servers. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that it's picking up my shared servers or my local servers right here. This would be my uh, Ethernet connection here, and this would be uh, my local server that is showing up on the side here. I have a history as well of servers that I've connected to. And then I've got this quick connect area where I can quickly connect to uh, any server that I want to connect to. So I can either do this quick connect or I can do a plus down here. And I can ask, also add a folder if I want to uh, kind of uh, lump these things together by different uh, types. So let's go ahead and uh, just show you what the quick connect looks like. You can see this is a quick connect to uh, connect to the server and you as you see I can connect by all of these different services you see it's got FTP Amazon web dev Amazon Drive backblaze b2 drop uh, box you can see Dropbox I mean you can just see all these different uh, services that they have included in here to make it easy for you to connect and I can put all of my information in there or if I just come back to servers I can also hit this plus right here to add a server and it walks me through a process of deciding what I want to connect to so let's go ahead and just use this plus and what we'll do is look at connecting to uh, let's say my Google Drive so I'm just gonna put uh, Google for the name here so that I know that's a Google uh, Drive connect and in fact let's just select this so I know it's Google Drive and then I'm just gonna click on next and now it takes me into a screen to connect and so I need to put my uh, Google credentials in there so let me go ahead and do that real quick and so now it's allowed me to connect to Google Drive now a couple of things that you can see in here I can choose the root URL uh, that I want the, uh, the the mount to go to so I can go to a particular folder or a local path uh, on there and I can also save it as a droplet and what that does is that saves a droplet on the desktop that I can use just to drag files to to upload so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna say save as droplet as well and you can see it creates this uh, save as area and so I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my uh, let's just say I'm gonna save it to my desktop just so we have it there and I'm gonna go ahead and say I can, I can have it save password in the droplet or prompt for password and so I'm gonna let it save it in there and I'm gonna say save and then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and save this configuration so now you can see that I've saved the configuration here and uh, let me just go ahead and hit uh, double click on this and so what it's going to do you see it's connecting to the service and now I'm inside the actual uh, Google Drive there and now it's mounted right here on my transmit interface now the beauty of this is that I can drag and drop things to the particular interface uh, however I'd like to uh, so if I wanted to drag um, you know for instance let's go ahead and go over to uh, pictures here and let's just say I wanted to drag this picture over to my Google Drive I could go ahead and do that just right between each other and you notice here that I got this now this new transfer dialog that's showing that it's uploading it and it has uploaded it uh, to my drive there and so everything's good so if I just come off here you can see that I've uploaded this particular photo to my Google Drive I can name it and do whatever I want with it uh, but now I've been able to upload that uh, another thing I can do and let me just pull the droplet into the screen here this was the droplet that was created on the desktop uh, I can do the same thing with this if I want to just drag a file uh, whoops let me just drag a file over to the droplet over here and I'll just drop it on top of that and you'll see that it's going to say hey it can't be open because of uh, it's an identified from the developer so you have to make sure you take care of that so I'm just going to go ahead and double click this and let's go ahead and set that as uh, acceptable so let me just go ahead and go into system preferences and you'll need to do this the first time with your droplets go into system preferences into your security and privacy and you want to go into general over here and you can see the Google droplet I want to go ahead and say open anyway we're gonna say open to allow it okay now that I've got that all set up and ready to go I'll just go ahead and grab this uh, picture right here and then I'm just gonna drop it on the droplet and it will start the upload process and I should get a little notification up on the top right when it's uploaded you can see the upload is complete so let's go ahead and launch transmit and take a look so here we are in transmit I'm just gonna double click on this drive right here and as you'll see the uh, the actual photo is showing up inside of uh, inside of my Google Drive here so as you can see it does a uh, does a good job of uploading that and you can use droplets to upload your items to your drive 
Okay, now another advantage that you have with a file manager like Transmit 5 is that you can sync the file browsing between the two panes here. You notice if I have this, I'm going in and, and it's not in sync, right? This isn't moving at the same time as I'm moving with it. So if I just uh, check this box right here and turn this on, you'll notice that now as I move around, right, it's starting, it's moving the other side the same way as it's moving this side and it's keeping that in sync. So that makes it really nice when you're browsing files and you can just turn it off by clicking this and go back to normal. Now another thing you can do is actually uh, synchronize uh, contents between two either local or remote folders. So let me show you how that works. What I'm going to do is let me just uh, click on this here and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, you know double click to connect to uh, a remote server here and what I've got is I've got this uh, test delete folder that I have here and I've got this test folder over here with these three images in it and what I want to do is have these images or this folder sync with this folder on my through my FTP service okay so what I'm gonna do is come up here and hit this sync item here and what it does is it says okay so I'm gonna sync between your Mac to this remote server uh, to those particular folders and so I can choose to use either the modification date or file size to determine if a file has changed so I'm gonna go ahead and use the modification date I can choose things like delete orphan follows or, or files or follow symbolic links skip items matching a rules list and I can actually set up rules and if I just click on this the preferences comes up and there's a rules area where I can set very specific rules for how I want things to be uh, uploaded and downloaded and what user permissions I want on those files as well and so I can create rules here that I can then use for those particular uh, transfers uh, another thing here too on transfers transfers I can also set permissions on what I want to do if there's a conflict with these particular uh, transfers whether it asks me what to do when I'm downloading files replaces the existing try to resume the transfer or skip the file so I can set those permissions right here as well let me just close that down so in this case again it tells me here's the plan this is what's what it's going to do so I'm just going to hit simulate so it'll show me what it's going to do so it's going to compare the two folders and it's going to compare the test delete folder and that's going to tell me what it's going to do and it says it's going to uh, basically transfer all three of these files over to uh, my remote server and it shows uh, what will be changed those are three files that will be changed it would show me what's going to be unchanged and what's going to be deleted so I can do a test before I do that so now that I've got that set let's go ahead and say sync files and now it's going to go through the process of actually comparing and then synchronizing and you can see that it's synchronizing the three folders uh, the three files into the folder it says it's done nothing was skipped nothing was deleted uh, I can say uh, view report so it'll show me what happens or done and you'll notice that now those files have been uploaded to my remote server so what's nice is with this synchronized feature I can just make sure that two folders are in sync uh, from my one machine to the other I can do that either remotely or on a local Mac as well uh, again if I come in here to the transfer area uh, I can do those settings here on what to do when I'm downloading right skip delete overwrite that sort of thing and uploading and then I can say continue after the air or pause pending transfers and I can also clear them in here as well and if I just click on this I can actually take this window and have it separate if I want to watch my uh, upload and download transfer activity I can do it right in here so let me just go ahead and close that so as you can see that's a great feature that's built into transmit okay now one of the things I want to show you is just a few things in the preferences here uh, again I can set the default FTP client to be transmit if I want to do that uh, or I can choose to have Pathfinder which is another application that we'll talk about I'm gonna leave this as the finder uh, but let's just say I use the same windows every time I log in and I want to have those open automatically when I launch transmit well I can say the windows open with and there that's my home folder uh, but notice I can choose anything I've got here including my server and I can say well I want that and my server to automatically load Mode, let's say every time that I go in there uh, I can say the tab title shows server or the folder and uh, and that just gives me a couple other things with software updates and all of that so let me just show you how that works and I'm gonna say connect to servers automatically so I'm gonna close this window and what I'm gonna do is quit transmit we're gonna go ahead and load it again And so now transmit will load and it's asking me about my server certificate and I just say continue 
And what it's going to do is it will automatically connect to the server, and there it goes. So now I've got my local folder over here as well as my server connected over here as well. So everything's loaded and ready to go. So that's a way that you can do that so you automatically launch into it. Let me just go back into the preferences and show you a few other things you can do here. Uh, you notice here we have a, a sync. So Panic does have a sync, a sync service that you can set up to sync your settings across to your iOS apps. I did... Uh, a screencast last uh, last week on Transmit for iOS. And so it'll sync the settings between your iOS devices, between your Macs, and all of that through this secure service. So it'll have all the settings for the servers that you've set up and keep them in sync. And so that's a great service to sign up for. Uh, we also have files in here. And so this is the, what, what you want to do when you double click on a file. You can either transfer it, do nothing, or edit it. Uh, my preference is to edit. So I select edit there. If you wanted to edit it in an external editor, you could do that as well. But I choose edit so that uh, sometimes I just want to uh, load a, a file before I choose whether I'm going to upload it or not. And so if you don't know that, you could have a problem by double-clicking on it. And then I could have custom editors as well if I wanted to. So for different file extensions, I could choose the application. So here if I have, you know, dot, you know if I have TXT, I can say I want uh, text edit, or I could choose any other application. It'll bring up my applications there. And I can say OK. And so now for any uh, TXT file, it's going to use text edit. And I can do that for everything else. So those custom editors will come up. Um, so I showed you the transfers already. I can set up cloud rules as well. And then uh, I can also set up keys here for SSH and SFTP connections if I wanted to make them secure. And if I just hit the plus here, I could generate or import keys. And you can see here I can name the keys and I can choose the different uh, format for those encryption keys. I can choose the size here and what the passphrase is and it will generate those keys uh, for me so that I can use them. Um, so for instance, if I just put uh, SSH keys here and then let's say I choose that format and let's say I really want to encrypt it at that level and I'll make up a passphrase. And then I say generate, you'll see that it'll start to generate those keys and now it's added them and you can see would you like to copy those keys to the clip, clipboard so that then I can uh, have them added to the clipboard to paste them where I want to. I'm just going to say close. But you can see there's my keys. I can come in and edit them at any time uh, if I want to do that but it will generate keys for you. And then finally on the advanced I can do proxy servers if I want to do that as well. Uh, let me just go ahead and close this down. So that gives you an idea of how uh, Transmit 5 works. Again, it's a very pretty application and the way it's laid out as Panic tends to do with all of their software. And it's a, it's a really nice and efficient way to work with your files and have file management across not only your local uh, Macs but remote servers as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.